Well, hey everybody, it's Fist Two Five, and we are here on launch day of Patch Three Point Fourteen, the Pie Patch, on Star Citizen live in the PU. And I just got this baby, and that, my friends, is the Constellation Taurus. We're going to do a quick ship review. Uh, the ship loader matrix just got updated, and because I bought the railing, I get this guy as a loader. So. Uh, while we cozy up with uh, security here in Orison, uh, let's. Uh, I'm a little higher for this guy. Uh, let's uh, let's roll the intro. All right, folks, so we're sitting here with security at Orison, and we're going to turn back and look at this ship, the Connie Taurus. It's pretty cool looking. We, we better get in this ship before we uh, get towed. So unlike my good buddy Skidmark here, I'm not going to enter through the cargo bay. I'm going to actually go through the proper door of the elevator. Let's go ahead and call this down. We'll take a look at this ship as we are uh, climbing up out of atmosphere. We'll do the external tour. You know, I, I, I actually used to own the ship um, about a year ago or so. I bought it when it was in concept or, you know, not made yet. And I uh, did a CCU upgrade on it. I do. Are those chairs different? I thought that the pilot chair on the other ones was a little bit further back. At least there's a little bit of ambient light here. I can actually see stuff. Makes a big difference. All right, hey, look at that new HUD. Fancy dancy. All right, let's get this thing going. This is my first RSI ship review. Um, I know I said I'd do MISC next, and, and I am. I just wanted to, hey, this is something new, new hotness. I wanted to get it out of the way. Do we have a comms up here? I don't think we do have a comms on the display, huh? Well, to old fashioned way, I guess, folks. Um, Oh, look, professor's online. Ooh. Anyway, we're cleared to launch. The ship's fairly long. I did a quipper before I uh, left. And uh, unfortunately, I have to use lots of energy weapons. Let's take a quick lift off here. The nose does pull up just a little bit. Looks like we are clear to go. Let's go ahead and head out into uh, around Orison here. Um, what a bright, shiny day here at Orison as we uh, we fly around here a little bit. We'll make a little turn out, head back towards the hangar area. Maybe make a little flyby, give it a little more gas. Um, so I've been kind of thinking about, do I buy this ship again? It's $10 more than, than what I paid for it back in the day. It was $150. Today, it's $160 um, US dollars. And uh, I don't know. I, I have the Raylan, so I don't think so. I think I already have my you know, mid-size cargo ship-ish thing, but we'll see. I, I want to give it a shot. I want to give it its fair review, its fair due. It's the first time I've ever flown it, so let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit here and make sure we are at the highest angle of uh, departure here, which should pretty much be 90-degree pitch ladder straight up. Um, I don't love how the HUD turns like that or the pitch ladder turns like that because I mean it's always kind of done it but I don't know it's very quiet I, I do have the sound effects turned all the way up um, we are cruising at a, at a speed about what 210 to 11 right now we're gaining as we're, we're 
getting out of the atmosphere more and more. Um, yeah, so I've I've come to get a little more used to the, this new HUD, but I'm still not in love with it. I, I'm really interested. Oh, we do have a comms menu right in front of me. I'm, I'm dumb. Sorry. Um, I, I'm getting used to it. I'm kind of feeling it out still. Trying to figure it out still, I really should say. Um, but yeah, let's take a look around the cockpit while we're heading out. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven multifunction displays. And uh, I believe they all do work. Uh, yeah. Um, ship status and the target status. We got uh, our shields up here that are still charging very slowly. I mean, really slowly. I have two good, good generators on there. I'm not sure. Wow. That is really a slow charge on the parapet. That's a big difference, but you know, it's a, it's a size three shield now. Um, on, on normal Connie's, I believe it's still size two. Maybe that's changed now, but it used to be size two. Maybe the power plant should upgrade. I'm, I'm not sure. Let's, uh, let's throw all of our power into shields right now. Um, let's see and see if we can get shields to actually charge faster. I guess we'll find out. Um, okay, let's look around here. So we have a lot of little buttons here. Uh, looks like a lot of them probably work. Although the scanning buttons don't work. Uh, ESP and cruise control, couple flight, decouple flight. Um, over here, we have the power switch. We don't really can't use the quantum stuff yet. Open the exterior. Over here is the gear. Do we? Nope. That just opened the exterior, which I didn't mean to do. Um, so not all the buttons work yet. So maybe this is not the gold pass here. Um, over on the right side, we have open cargo bay. So more of those. Um, our MFDs on the right side, we have, what does that say? Exit, uh, VTOL, uh, yeah, believe it or not, the ship actually does have VTOL. If you didn't know that, um, I don't see like, I'm sure it has an ejection. There's just no lever. Yeah. I think that's about it for switches and stuff. Um, it would be cool to have somebody up here doing some missile operator mode stuff as well. Oh, we're getting close to getting out of the atmosphere. Once we get to a quantum marker, or I'm sorry, an outer marker, orbital marker, whatever you want to call it, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and take like a kind of an exterior tour. I just know how weird this game can get sometimes uh, when you're when you're still kind of in atmosphere. Um, anyway, our speed's going up. We're almost. Yeah, we're at 360 and climbing. Our shields are still at 25, which is really odd. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or what. I just moved the power bar over to the middle. This should be weapons. This should be thrusters and this should be shields. So I'm not sure why I would only have 25 on shields. It's a very strange, but let's keep going. Let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe we only get 25, but it, more than likely that's some kind of a bug. So it looks like we're at 160,000 meters. We should be able to quantum. Ooh, I'm getting some red. Yikes. Pulling some G's, I guess. Oh, there we go. Kind of go over there, ship. Y'all over there. There we go. When I mean, you're halfway to space. OM-1. All right. Let's quantum to OM-1. I don't like how the thruster thing illuminates and blinks kind of real fast. And I, I, I hate how like it freezes like that when you're doing quantum, but. Oh, my gear wasn't even up. Maybe. That's why I was going slower. I don't know. Anyway, let's take a look at the Connie tours from the outside. Oh, we got some some pink. Probably not the right shader here. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's better. 
Um, so it, it has a, a good look from the outside. Very, very much a constellation uh, type ship. No, excuse me. Notice it doesn't have a snub fighter in there, um, which the Taurus does not come with uh, in lieu of some extra cargo. I believe that is also supposed to be a shielded cargo area. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be immune from scans or whatnot. Um, man, Crusader looks beautiful from this angle. Um, kind of crazy because it's at the pole. Anyway, um, maybe maybe this is maybe this is the screenshot. Let's take it. Done. Okay, what else we got? Um, a little bit square, more square of a cockpit, or I guess the front part of the ship. Um, I don't mind that that part of the design because it still stays true with the theme of the constellation. You can see that our VTOL did close. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and you see those hatches opening up, giving, you know, if we hit spacebar, we'll get more uh, on VTOL, but I'm going to close that. Uh, let's hit the landing gear button and you see the rear or the bottom engines, the ventral engines do move forward because they contain the landing gear and it's, it's fairly, I guess, center of gravity centered on the ship, uh, which, which is where it should be. Let's get a little light on it. And uh, yeah, it looks, it looks good. Um, let's go ahead and see the landing gear animation again. And the gear retracts up and those uh, ventral engines move to the rear. Let's uh, give it a, let's go down a little on gas. And uh, can we see the retros fire? Is that them on the front of the engines? Yes. So the retro thrusters are in front of each engine. And as we, let me zoom out and give it some gas. We do have a little bit of a trail. Give it some more gas and I'll give it some boost. So there's afterburner. And then there's just regular engine there. So yeah, it's looking good. Um, I do have some weapons up here. I have some attritions. So if I shoot left mouse button, you can see they're pretty much mounted on each engine. And they're all tied with the left mouse button. So, um, I do know on the on the Connie's the engines do get kind of blown off. So when you lose like a whole engine to sell, you're gonna lose a gun. So I, I kind of like that aspect of getting your sh ship damaged and and stuff. Um, there there should be a turret on the top and bottom, and we'll check that out in just a few minutes. Um, we'll do a little more looking around on this ship. Let's spin it around so we can get some more light. There we go. It is pretty sluggish in its controls, uh, which is to be expected because it's one, it's a Taurus. So. Uh, it's got the RSI markings on there. Um, let's see, it's got the turret hatch on the top. Looks like it's got, those are for, for missiles. Those, uh, I mean, that's at least what it looks like. It does carry some missiles. Um, these hatches right here. Let's see. We turn weapons off. Oh, nothing happened. Can I still shoot? No. Okay. Turn weapons back on. Yeah, I'm still able to shoot. So, okay. Not sure what those hatches are for. Maybe they are for missiles and I'm just, you know, maybe they happen when you actually shoot. Um, anyway, let's look at the bottom side of the ship. Let me get some light on it. I have to constantly adjust to the sun here. Uh, fairly flat, right? Let me, uh, let me go in the cockpit and let's, let's use our actual cargo button here. Open the exterior. Let's see what that looks like. We got our front elevator over here, which we took a ride up in. Um, none of those hatches opened. Although, is that a docking hatch on top? That may be what that is. It's like a docking hatch. Because it looks like I can see the inside of the ship. We'll, we'll flip it over into the light here in a minute. But you can see our cargo bay did unload. Oh, that was really fast. And, uh, yeah, we could probably fit some vehicles in there, some cargo in there. Um, I'm excited to give it a, a little cargo run. 
Um, so it looks like over here, we do have a docking hatch on the starboard side. And on the port side as well, sorry, it's hard to see. There's no sun over there. It looks like on top, there's also a docking hatch up top there. So that's very interesting. Is there one? On, there's not really one on the bottom because that's the elevator. So I'm curious to see where the turret comes out from. Now, I know the bottom turret should be a tractor beam to load things into the cargo bay, but there is a top turret. So we'll have to get in there and, and see how that happens and how that works. Let's close the exterior. And you know what, guys? I didn't burn a whole lot of fuel getting out of uh, Orison's atmosphere. Um, now, I'm sure the ship has quite a bit of fuel as well. Let's... Uh, I do like how the map zooms out every time again, uh, although I just wish it was fixed. But let's see uh, Port all -Star, two jumps, OM3 and then PO. I want to see how much gas uh, the cost of gas is going to be. Um, basically to go from Orison to Port all -Star. I'm also kind of curious why Port all -Star is not phase locked with uh, Orison, um, because Everest Harbor, Bajini Point, Port Tressler, um, all those space stations are locked with the, they're right above the cities, you know, Microtech and uh, Area 18 and Lorville. So it's interesting. Hey, at least the, the quantum staying on, at least that worked this time. And, and I'm not having any issues with PO spawning in. Which is a good thing. Of course, it's like four in the morning while I'm recording this, so I can't imagine too many people in in America are online. And I had cruise control on. Let's see how fast we can slow down, guys. With boost, that's pretty darn quick. That's actually really quick. Let's uh, go back up to SCM speed, and we will go ahead and request a landing at PO. Let me land. We're going to turn on our VTOL, drop our landing gear. So you notice we have this VTOL button over here. Um, so with VTOL open, that light is illuminated. With VTOL closed, it turns off. So, and that's good. That's kind of how landing gear light works as well. Okay, you want me to land on that pad there, Port Allisar? Okay. Gotcha. Let me uh, do kind of a... I guess a, I like kind of line, uh, landing in with the drone camera. Although it's kind of hard to judge speed sometimes. Um, especially at angles as well. And how far you're actually over the pad, because I know I'm not over the pad right now. But that's okay. That's what we're here to kind of mess around with and do. Get, let's get our roll angle correct. Okay, nice, nice, semi-gentle landing on PO. Landing gear is down. Ooh, that's really close to that bottom gun. No matter. All right, let's see exactly how much the gas costs. Um, 170 Alpha UEC. I mean, I, I don't have a number of how much gas I've used, how much hydrogen I've used. So that would be nice to know, to, to be honest with you. Um, We'll see how long it takes to refuel here. It, oh, really quick. So I, I, I'm guessing here that the the RSI Taurus is very, the Connie Taurus is very fuel efficient so far because it didn't use a whole lot to get out of Orison or maybe one of those settings was was tweaked. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and we will lift off here from PO. You see how that front end came up? I don't like that. And that does it on some ships and it just... It's a little irritating, but we rotated our engines and let's uh, head off into the sunset. Uh, we will head over towards, is that Yella? That's oh, Daymar. Okay. We will head towards Daymar and uh, we will go SCM speed. Let's get our speeds in real quick. So SCM speed is locking in at 143 meters per second and our shields are still at 25%. That's crazy. Um, our maximum speed here as I blow through all my boosts 
Um, we are max speed of 910 uh, meters per second. So let's. We already did the exterior tour. We did a cockpit tour. Let's take the interior tour of the Constellation Taurus. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Y. Hopefully no one tries to shoot me. I like this yellow pass of lighting. I really do. Um, it looks it looks really good. Uh, I know some of that's probably sun. Yeah, of course. So maybe I'm wrong. But it looks like these lights are yellow. Um, and I kind of like the blue and the yellow fitting together. They're, they 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 actually complement each other. Um, okay. <laughs> we are moving around in the ship. We can get a little force reaction here. Um, inside the cockpit area, or I guess the flight station area, there's not a whole lot that's interactable besides the chairs, uh, shields, and nothing. None of that's interactable. When the front door opens, just like a standard Connie anywhere else, um, we have the, the lavatory with the uh, the toilet. Oh, where's the toilet? No, this is just a shower. Where's the toilet on the side? No. There's no place to go poop. I think that's where that this was supposed to be, but it's obviously not there. So this is just a shower, folks. Uh, so it's not a toilet. Interesting that there is no toilet in there. Um, of course, there's definitely no table. Oh, what was that? Oh, I just sat down. Okay. I thought the table was going to come out for a second there. Um, yeah, there is no table. There is a little seating area to, to eat here. You could sit, um, but no table, unfortunately. Um, there is lockers here. They do open. That's where you're going to put your, you know, your gear, your weapons. Well, probably not your weapons, but at least your armor and stuff like that. And these are not interactable. Those look like weapon racks. Um, there are four beds, which is pretty standard on any uh, Constellation series. Looks like they are all interactable. Yep. And uh, let's head to the cargo area, which I believe is called Section C. So this is a large cargo area. Um, it, it definitely looks bigger than the other Constellation uh, series here. You know, I had a question. Let's see. It does say airlock. Oh. Okay. I want to make sure I didn't go down. Yeah. So there's an airlock at the top. That's kind of cool. Another way to get into the ship. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, we can raise and lower the cargo bay from this control panel as we go along the side. I don't think a whole lot is interactable. We have our standard uh, missile ferrying system for the ship. Uh, looks like the oxygen system is working. They're not giant black blobs. Uh, let's look at this airlock as I back away, because I have been kind of kind of like sucked out of those before. Look at that beautiful view of Crusader right there. Man, absolutely gorgeous planet. OK, let's head towards the back. We're on the starboard side. Um, high voltage, high voltage. Um, just more really cargo area stuff back here. Nothing I can see that's interactable. And a very large platform back here. I'm not sure why it's so large. Um, maybe we could have got more storage in here. It just seems like it's abnormally large for, you know, maybe we could have got a few more SCU in here. Let's make our way down the ladder to the storage area. Hopefully I don't fall out of the ship. Uh, that control panel doesn't do anything. I think we're really just walking around, right? Yep, so hey, force reactions are working. And I guess we can climb the ladder, so that's a good thing. I didn't fall out of the ship while we were in transit. Um, nothing we can interact with here. So here's the back room, which nothing for the power plant. OK, so this is just like a room in between going to Section D. 
And here is where normally the snub fighter would be. This is some extra storage area. So this should be the shielded storage area um, where I guess if you get shot and stuff, things don't blow up because it's shielded. Um, it might be scam proof as well. I just don't know. This isn't necessarily a smuggling ship, but you know, I, I, I don't know. Going along the port side, same thing as the starboard side. Uh, there's an airlock there as well. Uh, let's go ahead and <laughs> do the risky move here. Let's get into the turrets while the ship is moving. I've I've fallen out of the sh of the ship numerous times um, with other constellations. So let's see if this works. Upper turret, pretty standard seat and chair. It doesn't feel like we're moving anymore. Is that still a bug? Um, I think we're stopped. No, we're still we're still going. OK, that that got fixed. So you see the turret here popped out. And with no powers on, so I'm not moving, but that's uh, right above the cockpit area. So that's where the the top turret kind of comes out and then it, it tucks in this little piece of armor when it's not being used and probably the same for the bottom there so i like that i did put some gatling guns on this turret um some scorpions uh so they got 295 ammo on that guy so let's uh, go ahead and turn power on yep so the turret is not super fast. It's a little sluggish. I think pretty much for the most part, you want to put lasers on turrets, but I'm, I'm nostalgic, I guess. And I, I like to have at least some ballistics on something. Uh, we can see how fast we blow through ammo here on uh, the turret. And it's kind of sad. You really got to make your shots count here with with the uh with the ballistics um you can see us moving around yay look at me i'm raising my arms okay so that is the turret let's go ahead and exit we should uh the armor should enclose after the seat goes back up um always finish your always let the animation finish for these turrets uh pro tip there <laughs> All out of a lot of ships. Let's go into the lower turret. It should not work. This should be the tractor beam. Um, at least I'm hoping. Uh, I don't remember seeing anything for ammo down there. So let's look at what we look like outside the ship. Um, the turret is exactly where we thought it would be. Right below the cockpit. And those, I guess, are the, what the tractor beams are going to look like uh, for the ship. Uh, maybe they don't have a, a component or something. I, I'm not sure, but I kind of like the umbilical design up there uh, for the turret going up and down. So let's, can we even power on? Yeah, we can power on. Yeah, we can move around. We've got really good view from here, um, but there's, there's nothing for us to do because there's, there's some tractor beams on the ship. So... <laughs> Just wanted to show that the turret works and we're able to get into the turret while we're moving around so with that being said let's uh hop into a co-pilot seat we're doing an extensive interior tour here um okay so they have a screen in front of them instead of really seeing what's going on we'll do power on so they have a big they have a shield indicator, which is still at 25, which is very odd. Um, it makes me wonder how effective missile operator mode would be in this in this seat, because they should be able to target. Why is my gear flashing in there? Uh, my gear's up. Uh, kind of. Can I even put it up or down? No, it's, that's that's a bug. Um, yeah. But lots of struts, lots of uh, viewable area in the all the Constellation series, but especially in the Taurus with its more of a square, flat look. 
And just to confirm that the other co-pilot seat is probably going to have a screen right in front of it as well. Yes, it does. Okay. So, but I do see the missiles over here. So probably missile operator mode does work from there, which is, you know, a good thing to know. All right. With that being said, guys, I'm going to hop back into the pilot seat and uh, we'll, we'll go do something. We'll probably check out how it is in combat from the pilot seat. And then we'll check out. Um, oh, okay. Am I an auto gimbal? What's with the big circle up there? I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, we'll go get into some kind of a combat and then maybe we'll do some, we'll fill it up with cargo and then we'll do a loadout. Um, if there is a brochure, we'll do the brochure. Uh, I know there's a video just came out today. So we'll do the video and then uh, we'll wrap up with uh, some third person combat and final thoughts. And we'll see you in the next segment. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. All right, folks, we're here to ECN alert. And I think the ECN ship just spawned in. Yep. Kiddo Cardu. This should be against Buccaneers. So... This is going to be an interesting one. Um, kind of not loving that the strut is right in the middle of the ship. And we'll see what happens with 25% shields. Uh, kind of an odd bug. Um, looks like we got our first bad guy, though. Let's see how the Connie Taurus does. Try some missiles here. Ooh, ooh, we just took some shots. Cutlass Black, actually. Oh, the ship turns so slow. It'd be nice to have a turret gunner. Don't hit me, bro. Oh, I just took a part part of your ship. So I'm trying to separate my guns here with my attrition fours and my attrition fives. Let's see if we can get a full barrage going. Oh, another piece of you gone. The ship is so sluggish. I don't know, bro. He's shooting me. I forgot to set up my countermeasure keys, so. Yeah. <laughs> We're probably going to take some hits from missiles. Um, I had to rebind some keys. Although I'm not taking a whole lot of damage. Uh, these maybe I am at 100 and they just show in 25 or something like that. Come on, I got a big power plant, buddy. Ooh. I mean, I'm slow, but I I am hitting them. Yeah. I like their new uh, their new little things, their new little lines. Okay, another down, fifteen hundred bucks on that one. A little boost to get on target. Let's go into missile operator mode. Two missiles. All right, heading out of missile operator mode. Yeah, shields are damaged. He hit me. I don't have my countermeasures lined up, and I don't want to go back to my keyboard. So. This is a buck. This is a little bit faster. Got to stay more on target, a little bit less of a cross section. I'm probably going to stop you at some point, bro. Oh, as long as I don't run into an asteroid and kill myself. These smaller ships, yeah, they can do a lot more damage because they can maneuver better. 
This is where that turret gunner comes in handy. Plus, there's two ships on me. Whoa! Hey, I thought desync was uh, some fixes in work. When a ship is this slow, it can't afford the rubber banding flight. Yeah, I know. And his are recharging. Well, come on, dude. Yeah? Come on. Boom! Shield's critical in the back. I wanted to line up a missile shot. I should probably give a little bit more power to shields. A little bit less ammo, I guess. Yeah, get him. Get him. Get him on the pip. Go, 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 go. I guess he countermeasured every shot. Seems to be countermeasures for them are working really well. Am I though? This is taking a while. Am I in a Oh, I am. I don't mean to do that. Kinda, I did. All right, let my ammo charge up. How bad are my shields? In the back, they're really bad. I think this is kind of what CIG wanted, though. They didn't want real quick battles um and they got what they wanted <laughs> i think they really did uh sorry this is taking so long guys Let's see if my missiles hit him. Of course not. This is a cutty black, so. It's probably why I was taking more damage, because it is a cutty black. Last guy, I think. Yeah, you're hard to hit there, Buccaneer. Looks like I took part of his wing off. Funny how they don't fly weird. <laughs> but we do. When we take pieces of their... Uh, when they take pieces of our ship off. Finally got him. Yeah, it was, dude. I didn't know if I was going to be able to save you. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I guess so. All right, guys, so that is the, sorry, that took so long. That is the first person combat of the Constellation Taurus. It definitely handled itself pretty darn well. Um, I don't believe I lost any 
parts of the ship. No, nope, all four nacelles are on. All the guns still work. Um, I don't know. I can't with the shield being the way it is. I don't and only showing 25. I'm just not sure. Kind of how that works, but uh, yeah, we're able to do that mission. Let's uh, I guess let's go grab some stuff and try to trade. I suppose. Um, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to cut over to you grabbing some stuff and then we'll check out the cargo bay uh, when it's loaded up and I'll see you in just a second. All right, guys, let's check out what a full load in the Condi Taurus looks like. I uh, wasn't able to get much astatine as per usual after 312, but I was able to get a lot of fluorine. Um, so this is a full cargo bay, 175 SCU um, in the main cargo bay. And then in the rear, let's see what that looks like. Okay, and yeah, some more gas back there. Um, build up and I'm able to walk through it so I guess it's really not physicalized and that's very interesting a uh, little bug there CIG I guess uh, and I'm not even gonna try to go down there so yeah so we got some cargo in the ship and let's uh there we go I'll, I'll definitely put some uh, issue council reports in after doing all this flying and make sure uh, that uh, that stuff is properly addressed and uh, yeah let's uh let's get the heck out of here all right let's get off a of yellow here and uh, guys I think I'm gonna head to Oh, geez, let's head to Lorville. Although I don't really want to, I think we should. Hopefully it's pretty stable. Hopefully the frame rates are pretty good on it. And we'll, you know, I got a fast quantum drive. So uh, just hang on tight and we'll see you in just a few minutes. All right, folks. So uh, we are here at Lorville and we are going to make our way over to Tiasa Spaceport. And then onto the train and head on over to the big old building on my left and go to the, the trade district. And we'll see how much money we can make for our cargo run. Fairly uneventful here. Um, you know, standard cargo run. I don't expect to make a whole lot of money because the my commodities weren't that uh, expensive of commodities and... I didn't play the game with the whole journal and go get a bunch of food and drop it off somewhere. I didn't do that. I I just don't do a whole lot of cargo running and trading anymore because it's not very lucrative. It's, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not super worried about 30 K's right now. Just it's sort of this going pretty fast for the ship. At Lorville. Oh, Professor Reed. Professor, I will join your party, but uh, filming a video, so just gonna have to wait a minute. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I will fast forward. Thank you, Lorville ATC. Um, I will uh, put this in fast forward mode um, and uh, enjoy that little ride, and then we'll go back to normal speed when we get to the trade tower.
Okay, we're here at the trade terminal in Lorville. And I'll tell you what, really, really bad frame rates on the train and just moving around the city. Um, yeah, not not great at Lorville. Um, so, and we still got this crazy glare on these screens. Okay, Astatine, we're gonna make 3K on that. I think we're only gonna make a few hundred credits. Takes so long to process orders and sell things sometimes. Um, I think we made 400 bucks on that. And then the fluorine, I don't remember what we paid for it. I'm sure we made a few thousand credits though. Okay, and I just wanna make sure that, that goes away and it did. Um, so that is uh, trade mission successful here at Lorville, and uh, there's Constantine Herson up there. Uh, freight rates are good right now. It's just when we go outside, uh, not great. On, uh, this oh. Is Crusader Security Director Sasha Rust with a vital security alert. Oh no. The criminal gang known as the Nine Tails have launched an illegal blockade of Bountiful Glen Station. At this time, all travelers are advised to avoid the affected area until quantum of travel can be restored. To aid with our efforts, Crusader Security is calling upon any trained security professionals in the area to assist. Stand by for further announcements. Well, guys, it looks like I've been called to Bountiful Glen Station because at my heart, I am a dogfighter. With that, I'm going to move on over in this video to the loadout of the Constellation Taurus. So stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that little red button down there. It would uh, be awesome if you did. Thank you guys for watching so far, and we'll see you in just a few. All right, folks, so we're here at the uh, loadout section for the Constellation Taurus. And uh, I just want to go over some some base stats here. Uh, looks like our total DPS with our loadout right now is 2560 with 320 alpha damage, uh, 800 DPS on the turrets with 80 alpha damage, and 90,000 damage with the missiles. Um, the shields that are currently installed takes 83 seconds to charge, provides 100,000 hit points, um, recharges at 1,200 hit points a second. Uh, our power plant is really underused. Uh, it's 25,000 max. It's an industrial. Um, it's going to have a ton of power. And uh, the cooling... Uh, is way underutilized as well. Uh, those are also industrials. So I think industrial long term is going to be a good fit for the ship. Everything's a grade C industrial um, for the systems. And I think long term, yeah, that's a great fit. But short term here in Stanton, uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can raise that 2560 up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all the gimbals. I don't know if I can actually, I can't do that on two of them. Two of them must remain gimbaled. Um, but I can change two of the weapons to uh, fixed five, size five. Um, of course, I'm not going to put a ballistic on there. I would love to, but uh, they are just completely useless in 314. Um, and there's really no good size five ballistic except for the cannon there. So um, we're actually going to throw in a laser repeater. Um, if you look at the Attrition 5 and the 5.57, they don't have any DPS variants anymore. These guns are just super generic. The Attrition actually used to do more damage uh, the more it heated up, but the price of that was the range. Now the ranges are exactly equal, so really it comes down at this point to cost. Uh, you can buy the Galdarine uh, much cheaper, and in other areas, you don't have to go to Lorville to buy it. You can go to Area 18 or New Babbage. Um, what other differences? The the attrition is a little bit better stealth-wise, but you're not going to be stealthy in the ship regardless. So go with the 557. Um, that is the build in 314. Um, 
And as far as the size fours that are gimbaled, um, again, you could go with the Attrition 4, but there is no difference, folks, except for EM and price. So go with the 447, leave it stock. For the man turrets, now this is a little different. Uh, you only have one man turret on the Taurus, so you have a choice. You could go with a whole bunch of different things. You could go with the Ballistic Repeater, the Sawbuck at 620. You could go with uh, 620 DPS. You could go with the Ballistic Gatling with very low ammo, as I did in the first part of the video, which is what I recommend. Or you could just go with uh, another Laser Repeater, um, which uh, looks like the Cannons actually have a little bit better DPS, but the Repeater, I think, is better overall choice um i would say if you want to go full energy weapon build go with the 227 keep it stock but if you want to give your turret gunner a little bit of oomph um throw in the scorpion gt 215 uh it does have a little more ammo in the turret than it would have had on the ship as far as missiles go leave them stock you have a ton of missiles. You have four missile racks with six missiles each. Uh, these are all size twos. Um, Strike Force 2 is cross-section. Great missile. I'd leave it stock. Um, you can't change... Excuse me. You cannot change the missile rack size. They are bespoke. So you are stuck with size twos. Um, I don't think there's any real reason to get... You, you could go up to the Dominators if you want EM a little bit more damage, but uh, I think they're a little bit easier to spoof. Um, even the Infrareds do a little more damage, I think, but or no, no, the Strike Force 2 does. So Dominators do a little bit more damage, but I would just I keep it stock. I don't see any point in changing. Uh, now, as far as the actual things that you should change. Um, well, before we do that, let's look at the DPS now. We're at 3300 for the energy weapons and 700 alpha so that's a significant change and the turrets went up as well to 1291 um for the shields you get an industrial grade or i'm sorry you get a capital class shield you get a size three shield but you only get one there's one choice for this in my opinion why is everything the same for these shields i i don't understand what yeah she's doing with components and stuff Urkel.games is supposed to be pulling this data directly from the game files, so this is probably accurate. Normally, I would tell you to get the parapet um, because it has the highest hit point pool. Um, I probably still do that just to be on the safe side, but if everything is 100,000, they get the military FR-86. And the reason I say that is... Um, because they they actually they're supposed to recharge faster i don't think it's gonna matter here i think everything's the same yeah i guess if everything is the same i would probably go with the cheapest actually i just uh, want to have a stronghold i just leave it stock leave it as is um for the actual power plants comes with a diligence industrial grade c now, you see, these do have some differences. Um, I would go away from the industrial and I would go to the tried and true military. I would go with two JS 400s. Um, they just provide the most reliable uh, type of power. And what's going on there? There we go. Uh, we still have a ton of power left over. So I would stick with the, uh, the military grade A's for those. And the coolers, um, we have a ton of cooling already, but if you, I would leave it stock. But if you wanted to upgrade it, uh, go with some snow packs. Uh, it gives you just a little bit more cooling, but not a whole lot. It's just one upgrade. And for the quantum drive, because it's a size two, um, I would go with any of the military drives, um, preferring the XL1, but it is more expensive. You can easily get away with a cross field and be just fine. I mean, we're talking cross field um, from Keogh to Hurston is under three minutes. Um, and the XL1 is 
still under three minutes, 245 to 256. You're saving 10 seconds uh, and a bunch of credits by, by doing a crossfield. But if you want the best, I'd say go with the XL1. So let's add all this stuff to the cart and pull up a cart. The upgrade to this ship in 314, my recommendation is just shy of 450,000 Alpha UVC. Um, a lot of that coming from the, the JS400s and the snowpack uh, coolers. But really, I mean, other than upgrading the quantum drive, you could just leave this ship bone stock. And it will be just fine. And it'll be fully gimbaled, which is maybe something kind of nice to have uh, in, a, in a cargo ship like this with forward firing weapons. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, since it is a new ship, uh, it's not sold in game yet. So you have to buy this in the real world. And we already went over that price. So we're going to move on from this uh, straight into the brochure. So just hang on and... Okay, so we're here at the Constellation Taurus product overview brochure. A job done right. You don't have time for nonsense, and neither does the Constellation Taurus, featuring a focused design that does what you need and does it well. This is a ship that is ready to get down to business. With a chassis that's been refined to the essentials, the Taurus can handle bigger hauls than its brothers while maintaining a fuel economy few in its class can match, and I can attest to that. It's really good thanks to its new lower fixed thrusters. The extended rear hull houses 12 hydraulic, I think it's 12, 12 hydraulic piston lifts for easy loading and our patented quick hitch cargo release system for even easier unloading. You've got work to do. And now with the 2945 Taurus, you've got the vehicle that'll work with you. So this is, this is the old Taurus brochure because it's 2951 now. Where it counts, RSI knows that you transport all sorts of cargo. The 2945 Taurus has created a safety ejection system. As a standard feature of its main hold, the new SES lets you eject dangerous or unstable cargo while in transit at a moment's notice. We've expanded the security hold to protect even more of your valuables. Reinforced with double-blind advanced tech plating, it will stop almost all scans while not leaving a noticeable blind spot. So I think the purpose really is to Put your illicit things in there. Rugged to the core, direct, honest, simple, good for business, and good for a ship. The 2945 Taurus, we removed everything that didn't make dealing with cargo easier. Because when you're dealing with cargo every day, that extra effort makes a big difference. We completely re engineer the rear interior support structure to add an additional 5% of clearance space without sacrificing any hull strength. This is rugged, sturdy construction that you can depend on when you need it most. We don't look at the Taurus as a mere ship, but as an investment for the future. Compact power generator. Well, we're not going to go through all these because a lot of this stuff has changed. Um, uh, I, I'd be interested to see a new brochure, to be honest, uh, CIG. So, um, yeah, I don't want to go over the components very much. Um, Cool pictures of the Taurus here. Uh, not quite what we have in the game, but pretty darn close to it. Um, just a few differences that I would see. Um, yeah, the Constellation Taurus brochure. And here's a bunch of stats that are uh, six, almost seven years out of date. <laughs> but yeah, Taurus does stand for the bull, if you guys didn't know that. Um as part of its constellation, it is a bull. And then here's kind of a breakdown of the ship. And we've already been through the ship, and uh, it says it's a shower and a head, but it's not. It's just a shower. <laughs> um, oh, and then all the ships kind of compared together. The and Andromeda, the Aquila, the Phoenix, and the, uh, the Taurus. So... With that, guys, uh, let's move on over to the brand new commercial by RSI uh, slash CIG. And then we'll move on to the chase camera and wrap up the video. Thanks for sticking around so far.
They say that some things just don't go out of style. That the true classics never die. Touring, exploration, combat, and now introducing Long Haul Freight. The all-new Robert Space Industries Constellation Taurus. Still does it all.
Well, friends, that just about wraps up our video on the RSI Constellation Taurus. I hope you've enjoyed this journey so far, uh, as I certainly have. Um, it is an interesting ship that I'm glad it's finally out. It's it's a good cargo hauler. I think it's a good all around ship. Um, I would like them to to add in the other two size fives. Uh, that looks like they're supposed to be there, um, and. I'm not sure what's up with that whole shield thing at 25% for each shield face. Maybe they all add up to 100%. I'm not sure. But what do you think about the Constellation Taurus? Do you own a Constellation Taurus? Um, you know, that's the first RSI ship review I've done. And I kind of skipped ahead and did this out of order because it's a new ship. And uh, I want to give you guys the opportunity to see it. But... Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, questions, whatever you got. Doesn't even have to be about the Connie Taurus. Uh, I just appreciate talking to you guys, and I really want to thank you for watching the video. And I've had a great time making it. And thank you to Bebop Dallas and uh, Java Sparky for the colorful, if not long, uh, chase camera dogfight scene. Um, it was certainly a good time, and it was fun to shoot. So, uh, from Fist25, I want to say thank you. Good night, Stanton. And remember, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will.